Is it just me or does it feel like September took forever to get done? Just me? Okay. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, Mooney Reads, where I talk about books and things. And today I have my September wrap up. Now, I would strap in, as they say, because this is a long one. It's 17 books long. I did talk about five of them already in a week-long read-along, read was it a read-along vlog thing that I did, which I will link up here where you can get some of what I'm going to say today. I also want to mention that I did participate in Space Opera September, and I won Space Opera September. I did all the prompts okay but i'm not gonna go into like i'm not gonna separate this i'm just gonna go into it like i always go into it which is what books i read in the order that i read them and there are a bunch of them so let's jump right into it i'm feeling really like relaxed today like i'm really like chill like i feel <laughs> like there should be some like reggae music playing or something if you know what i mean but yeah let's let's get into it it was actually a really good reading month i have good reads down here because again september feels like it was so long ago and i kind of forgot a lot of the things i read so first book in this here <laughs> list numenon by marina Lostiter. Now, this book is about an astrophysicist called Reggie Strafer, and he finds a object in space that is blinking in a very weird way. And he's trying to get a grant so that they could go investigate it, and it's not a surprise, he's granted said money to go investigate this weirdo star that is blinking in a seemingly strange way but instead of taking a crew of people and like letting them procreate because it's gonna take them hundreds of years to get there what they decide to do is take clones of people they think are good for the mission and well it talks a lot about like does is your genetics enough for you to be who you're supposed to be and stuff like that this is a this is straight up a space opera it takes i think i would say up 80 percent in space and it's really interesting i think it touches on some really interesting facts i really really enjoyed the read until the last little bit the last little bit was just kind of meh for me and i kind of ducked the star because of that and i only gave this four stars this is a series um i can't tell you what happens at the end to make this a series but i will say that i don't plan on continuing because i feel that this book was really well like wrapped up like this if you read this alone you get a sense of a finished story with possibly an open ending but i don't mind open endings it's like ender's game like i don't mind just reading ender's game and not continuing on with the series so for now i am just gonna keep numenon i really enjoyed it i gave it four stars but honestly i don't plan to continue on with the series next up i was feeling a little bit kind of science fictioned out because i've been reading a lot of science fiction lately and i wanted to read a thriller i really love thrillers like again i keep saying i love sci-fi but i the other side of me really loves like dark thriller dark academia horror reads and i picked up the other people by cj tudor and i i had already read the chalk man by cj tudor and i think it got a lukewarm reception but i really enjoyed the chalk man so i was excited for this one this is the story about a man who is driving home from work late yet again his marriage is kind of falling apart kind of like my nail polish and he decides and he's just basically late once again and he knows his wife is gonna be pissed off and just as he is like in the road he sees a car with a little girl that looks like a lot like his little girl and he swears he sees her say daddy and then by the time he gets off the highway he i'm sorry my eye itches he gets a call and basically they tell him your wife has been murdered your daughter has been murdered we're so sorry and because of something that he did in his past he becomes for a while the prime suspect in these murders 
but he's convinced that he saw his daughter on the highway. He is 100% convinced that his daughter is still alive. So this is the quest of him trying to find his daughter because he knows she's out there. I really, really, really enjoyed this book. I, I like the way CJ Tudor writes. I like the way that she, I found out, I thought she was a he, but I love the way that she makes things like, you're kind of wondering all the while, is this really paranormal? Does this really happen? Who is this person? Like, she she does make this atmosphere really interesting. And I really enjoyed this book. I gave it a solid 4.5 stars. I love that, again, there is a kind of open ending. I more or less had a lot of this stuff figured out, but once you read, read a bunch of thrillers, you start to figure things out really fast. But that didn't diminish from the fact that I really enjoyed this ride. And I'm not gonna tell you if it's paranormal or not, because I hate it when people are like, this book is paranormal, this book is not paranormal, it was never ghost at all. I think you should experience it for yourself. The next book I picked up was a middle grade book called The Wild Robot, and this was written by Peter Brown. This story, again, it, if you saw my week-long reading vlog, you saw what I thought about it. It's a really cute story, but I think it was a little bit too young for me. Like, if I had a child and I had read this with them and stuff like that, I think that would be great. But at the same time, it got me interested in the sequel because there is a sequel. Now, this story is about a little robot that basically wakes up in an island. She doesn't know why she's there. She has no idea how to communicate or even how to survive on this island. And it's all about her learning how to take care of animals, learning how to earn their trust, learning how to speak their language until her past catches up with her. And then it kind of becomes a survival sort of story. It's really sweet. It's really beautiful. I plan on keeping this book and I might just get the sequel because even though I say it was too young for me because some of the themes were a little bit too cutesy putsy. Is that a, is that even a thing? Cutesy putsy. I still think that it was a really nice story and I want to know how it ends. Does she, yeah, it was a, a, a cute story and this was one of the books that I bought for myself this month and I'm really happy that I bought a book and I read it right away. Oh, and I gave this book, I gave it like a 3.75 four stars. Again, for what it is, I think it's really good, but it, <laughs> it wasn't like, like I'm not crazy to read the sequel. Let's just put it that way. Next up, I read The Tenth Girl by Sarah Fanny. Now this is a story about a girl named Mavi. Mavi, Maria Victoria, and she's from Argentina and she gets the opportunity of a lifetime when she is sent to what is it called? Vaccaro School as a teacher when she's only 18 or 19 years old. This is a fresh start for Mavi because her mother was involved with the guerrilla to take down the government in Argentina. And when they found her, Mavi is um, scared that they're gonna go after her next. And eventually she basically has to get out of there and this is her ticket out, this school, which is basically haunted. Now, I ended up giving this book three stars because I figured out the twist really, really fast. And once you figure out the twist, this is one of those books where it, it's like everything stops being scary or everything stops being interesting, you know, because, and, 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 and if you are somebody that takes part in a certain hobby. I don't want to spoil it because like some people might not, but if you're somebody that takes part in a certain hobby, you will figure out the twist pretty quickly. Like I, I, I saw it, I was like, oh, so this is what this is. But honestly, I think for what it is, and as I, I think it's a debut novel. If it is a debut novel, I think this is a haunting good time, honestly. And um, the twist at the end, I'm, it, some people say it comes out of nowhere, but I actually was like, it's pretty obvious from the beginning. I don't think there's anything wrong with the twist. It's still because I figured it out so fast and I figured out, you know, again, this is one of those things. It's kind of like that movie. What's that movie called? The Sixth Sense, 
where once you kind of know the issue at hand, you're like, I mean, it's still enjoyable, but you kind of, you know, it, 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 it no longer has that sense of foreboding, like, scariness. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Monica. I like I like it when I when I pretend that I teach English. Um anyway, I I I like that. I think you should give this book a try. I you know, gave it 3 stars because again, I figured it out. And yeah, but I think it's interesting and you know, always supporting Latinx authors writing kind of different stuff. I wouldn't even tell you what this book is categorized as because the moment I tell you the genre, you might figure it out. So I'm just gonna say it's a haunting good time. <laughs> this part of the video starts off my I'm too stupid to get that book portion of the month because I read a bunch of books where I was like, what the actual hell did I just read? And we're gonna start with Neuromancer by William Gibson. I kept saying in my vlog, I love this, I love the Blade Runner cyberpunk feel of it But I just had a vague notion of what happened in this book like I I, I enjoyed what I did enjoy But I, do, I I was stumped for most of it. I was like what's even how where how did we get here? What is happening? I you know I This was too smart for me. This was just way over my head. It went way over my head This is I'm gonna try to summarize it. I gave I gave it three stars because not because it was bad, but because my enjoyment of it was stunted by the fact that I was completely confused throughout the story. But anyway, the whole point of this story is supposedly not supposedly in the story. There's this man, and he is part of an American elite group that used to be able to connect to the Matrix, and the Matrix is literally the Matrix, like. The Matrix, you know. Um, but he lost that ability too, and here comes this man who offers him a whole bunch of money to do a job for him, and which is basically to get a dead guy out of his dead stasis, you know. <laughs> Um, and well, he accepts because he really wants to get back to the Matrix, and that is all I know. <laughs> stuff happens. I liked some of the stuff, some of the stuff I didn't understand, and yeah, great book. I'm too stupid for it. Oh, next up, I'm gonna scoot over so you can see the picture. I read Severance by Ling Ma. This is going to go over here on the shelf of my favorite reads ever, ever. It is so well written. It is so good. I gave it five out of five stars. I think it's my only five star read of the month. And it's basically about <laughs> a pandemic. And said pandemic starts in China and said pandemic is very badly treated by the government. And eventually it expands and expands and it's in New York and she's in New York. But honestly, the book is not about that. The book is about hope and the book is about your ability to retain hope that things are going to get better, go back to normal, whatever. It's a really hard hitting book, not only because of the situation we're living, but because Ling Ma is an incredible writer. I think she creates an incredible world, incredible real people, incredible people that are immigrants. I, she talks a lot about immigration in this book in a way that I think any immigrant can relate to, and especially Asian Americans and I just thought the book was amazing. It was a beautiful mix of what I like in pandemic books. Also, the pandemic in this book is not actually an illness. It's kind of like a zombie sort of thing, but it's not zombies that eat you and wanna kill you. It's basically what this, pan what this it's not a virus, it's a fungus. What this fungus does is that it basically renders you not capable of doing anything else but 
your routine over and over like for example there is there are people that work in retail and they just fold clothes over and over until their bodies just die and they continue to do it until there's nothing left of them and i think that that is a really interesting metaphor for society and for how we are willing to stay in positions that we are not happy with until basically we just do it over and over until we just don't know what else to do with our lives and i think this book talks a lot about the fears of change of change of things being different of you being a different person and of you not living up to expectations that you put upon yourself five out of five stars i'm gonna stop ranting about it because this video is getting way too long up next i read another book that i gave 4.75 stars too. I didn't give it the whole five stars because after I read Severance, I was like, I was like in this cloud nine of amazingness. And then I read Orion Lost by Alastair Kisholm. Now this book is incredible. Don't get me wrong. It really is. It's a, it's marketed as a middle grade, but I would actually call this well done YA, where basically we have really young people doing things that adults should be doing and acting like young people would act in that scenario basically these children are part of a crew that's going to earth 2.0 and a few months into the mission something happens and for some reason the adults can't wake up and the only ones that can wake up is a group of misfit kids that are being trained to become eventually like captains and hackers and all of those things, you know, engineers, whatever, a bot botanists, b biologists, etc. And there is a good a explanation as to why the adults can't wake up. But what I really like is that the kids spend most of the book being like, how do we wake up the adults? Because we're really scared and adults are supposed to be here fixing this. And I think that's how children would react in a situation like that. They're a little bit older. I think the, the, the youngest is 11 or 12, but the oldest is 16. So that's why I think it like merges, like it goes between YA and middle grade. But I think because of the themes of the book, this is definitely a YA book. Also, there is a unreliable AI. And I think unreliable AI is one of my favorite things in science fiction. And well, these kids have to figure out now the nothing makes sense and the computer might be lying to them and they have to figure out how to work together to A, wake up the parents, B, get this ship back on course and C, save everyone. And this is so well written. It's so fun. I really, really, really enjoyed this book. And I 100% recommend that you pick it up because it will not disappoint. All right. And then up next, I was doing Space Opera September still. And I had to read a novella that was space opera themed. So I decided to go with Night Flyers by George R.R. R. Martin. And in this case, we have a group of people that are chasing kind of like a mythological race of aliens that has been traveling the universe for millennia. And they have discovered that they might be close to making contact with them. And one of the crew members is just basically obsessed with contacting this race of aliens. And the rest of them are just there because it, this is their job. Except the captain. The captain is shady AF. And weird shit starts to happen. And let me tell you, this is completely a horror novella. I loved it. I wasn't... I think I was scared near the end. But during the, the beginning parts where shit starts to hit the fan, I wasn't very scared. But then there was a point where I was like, what the hell is actually going on? And I love the twist. There are people in this world that have telepathy or different kind of like x many mutations. I'm always going to compare everything to X. So it's really engaging. It's really good. And I am really glad that I read it. I gave it four stars. It was just a fun time the show sucked balls don't watch the show read the novella and well now i have uh 
other stories here and I'm really excited to read them. I really, I, and by the way, the twist ending and how, just how it ends, the ending for me is paramount in most books and the ending here is loved it. I really liked it and I recommend that you read it. Even if you're not into science fiction, I think you will actually enjoy this novella. It's so good. I'm not a fan of this cover though. I don't like the purple blue. I like the other cover, which is like, I'll insert it here, but I couldn't find that one. Next up, I read The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. And I gave this book three stars. I love N.K. Jemisin's writing, and the three stars has nothing to do with her writing. It has nothing to do with her amazing way of telling stories. It's just that I think that if you are going to enjoy this book, you really, really, really have to have a love for New York or at least a love for the New York shown to you in television if you haven't been there or just that want to go to New York and see the Statue of Liberty and all that jazz and I have none of that. So I just found it almost stereotypical to the point where it was not enjoyable and uh, I don't know there was there's there's this like really obvious thing that the characters in this book have to do and they keep not doing it and I'm guessing there is something to be said about you know helping people but not wanting to because they're privileged and marginalized people shouldn't be the ones to reach out to non-marginalized people I don't know there's something to be said there but at the same time it's like imagine for a moment that we are the Avengers and we have to get all together to save the world and you're just and all of them are just like yeah but let's not do that but they're like but but they're telling you literally no 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 you you need all of you nah it's okay we don't need and it got really frustrating and again I just found it that because it was based in New York and I'm so over things being based in New York you know I just it was a fine story it was a, it was beautifully written because it's N.K. Jemisin but honestly as you can see I got rid of my physical copy of the book because I just have very little shelf space and I didn't want to have such a big book taking up so much shelf space so um it wasn't my best read of the month I'm sorry oh my gosh remember how I said we were going into how I read books that I didn't understand this month welcome Babel 17 by Samuel R. Delany um okay I gave this book three stars because what I did understand was really cool but most of the time I was like I'm having a weird fever dream or a really bad trip but I think that's the point of the book so let me try to tell you what this book is about this book is about there's this war going on between humans and aliens and apparently the aliens developed a code which is Babel 17 which basically kind of at the beginning you think gives off instructions as to where to kill or where to strike next and then we find out because this wonderful linguist realizes that this is not a code but a language and I'm gonna leave it at that <laughs> The government basically decides to bring her along. It's like, okay, so you come along um, and, and I don't remember why they decide to travel and she has to bring, again, a bunch of people and they, they, they resurrect people from the dead. It's really strange. I was so confused <laughs> for this entire experience. Like, it was one of those times where I'm like, am I just dumb? Like, am I just stupid? Um, the writing is amazing. The concepts that I did get are amazing. I love the the way they talk about languages, like how you speak or what you speak is how you see the world. It reminded me in that way of Ursula K. Le Guin's The World for Wor the Word for World is Forest, where basically 
your language determines how you see the world you know and the talk about language was incredible you know i speak various languages and it's true like there are concepts that you cannot explain in a different language and that part i got i just didn't get a lot of the action stuff i mean at some point like sometimes i was like did i just miss chapters did i just fall asleep and not pay attention because this book went right over my head but the parts that i did like i loved so there's that i, I can't say more because i didn't i didn't get it i didn't get it okay i mean i enjoyed it remember what i was talking about like i enjoyed it but i didn't get it yeah i enjoyed it but it just it went over my head. this was too smart for me then i read six weeks by Muriel lafferty this was also part of space opera september so was babel 17 and numenon and night flyers so this was this is a, a, a thriller in a spaceship basically we have clones clones have become a thing but of course now we need laws for clones and there's a lot of political pull back and forth but the point is yeah there's this spaceship full of clones that are leaving earth because earth basically doesn't really see them as humans so they're going to go to another planet colonize that planet and just start over with them and their humanity and the main crew is made up of i believe six clones and all of them have shady ass pasts and what happens is they all wake up and they realize that they are new clones and there has been a real shit show happening on the ship because everyone was murdered and they're trying to figure it out who murdered everyone and because they're all criminals they could all be potentially the murderer and again we have an unreliable ai that was interesting but honestly i only gave this book three stars because they spend so much time on shit that is not important and sometimes they begin to like like i don't know if i was the captain of a crew of people that clearly we could all be killers at any point i would sit everyone down in a room and be like we gotta figure this out they just take their damn time trying to like doing whatever and the flashback scenes i realize that i'm not a fan of dual timelines like when you're showing me the past and the present and the past and the present and i just don't like that so i only gave this book 3.5 stars it was fine but i think it could have been a lot better it was just okay then we get to the worst book that i've read this month and that is children of time by adrian tchaikovsky i have nothing to say about this book it was boring i was not interested in any of the story like any of the storylines this book is about basically as always humans fucked up earth and we decided to make earths like like planets and then we unleash a virus that is basically going to speed up evolution of monkeys to turn them into humans does does adrian tchaikovsky understand that monkeys are not our ancestors like they're close relatives but they're not our ancestors but well the point is that in the end it's not monkeys that get infected there, there is a cool there's shit goes down everything gets fucked up and it's spiders that get the virus so now you have dual timelines happening again i don't like that you have the remnants of the human race that are trying to land on this planet then you have the spiders that are like evolving and having societies and i think there was something that was kind of they tried to do something interesting but it just didn't it, i hated this book I hated everything about this book. I finished this book at 3.5 speed and I have no idea what happened and I don't care. Then I was feeling again like I had um, science fictioned myself out. So I picked up And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. 
and this tells the story of a group of people that are invited to this island called Soldier Island and there they start getting killed off one by one and we have to try to figure out who the killer is. I have to say this is my first Agatha Christie book and I, I hate to be that person but I was like I guessed who the killer was to me it was kind of obvious because of certain things that happened and also um, I, I guess I had hyped up Agatha Christie in my mind to be like the best that I would ever read when it comes to thrillers or murder mysteries and honestly this book is good but I think I had hyped it up too much in my mind I, I like I think I read somewhere that this was the scariest book somebody had ever read that it was going to just like give you nightmares and honestly it was good it was just not that good if you know what I'm saying so I gave this book four stars it was fine but it wasn't as amazing as it was hyped up in my head so I liked it um, but I also don't feel like picking up any more Agatha Christie and not because it's bad I just wasn't wowed enough by this particular story which kind of makes me sad then the second to last book that I read and this was only because of the Netflix show coming up that is The Turn of the Screw by James Henry I read this in audiobook format and it was read by the one and only Emma Thompson and if it wasn't for that, I would have given this book <laughs> two stars. I tried to read it before once and I was like, what is happening? And I saw somebody um, on uh, Goodreads be like, words, 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 ghost, words, 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 possibly ghost, words, 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 death, words, 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 is she crazy, words, 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 death. And it's like, basically, that's how I felt when I was, I was like, why, why is it like this? But I really did enjoy the experience of having it read to me by Emma Thompson. <laughs> and I think she really added that element of fear and like, is this person going crazy? Are these children really seeing things? Or is this this person's interpretation of something? Like what is happening? And I really like, again, that if you're looking for a really nice close ending with everything tied up in a bow, this is not the book for you. Um, this was just a weird ass read and I actually really enjoyed it. So I gave it 3.5 stars. Basically there's this governess, she's sent to this place called Bly Manor where she's going to take care of a little girl, she's going to be her governess. But there's a little boy and the little boy gets sent back from school and they say, sorry we can't take him because he's wicked and she says it's impossible because the little children are so sweet and nice and then ghosts or possibly ghosts or possibly the governess is crazy possibly we'll see i know that this is not the only thing that blind manor is based off of but really i think henry james is again too smart for me we're gonna put this in this this is too smart for me thing but thanks to Emma Thompson, I kind of understood what was happening. All right, I promise you, we're almost to the end. The second to last book I read is M Emergency Skin by N.K. Jemisin. This is a novella about basically humans destroyed Earth. I love, <laughs> I love how I just read things about humans destroying Earth all the time. And they are sending this person down to Earth to get some things that they need in order to have skin because where they live now, where we live as humans, we can't have skin. But when this person gets to Earth, he sees that Earth is not this barren wasteland that they, we thought we had left behind, but it's actually green and beautiful again. And I think the metaphor here is really in your face and I didn't mind it at all. I loved the story. I can't say much. It's only like 36 pages long. I don't want to spoil it for anyone. But I do think that the best way of consuming this story is through audio because um, like you're listening, it, it, it's, it's told as if 
you were hearing the orders and the, the narrator doesn't exist like you are the narrator so you're hearing orders from these people that are telling you to get stuff and they're trying to explain things to you and they sometimes answer you things that the narrator asks but it's not written i don't know if i'm making it clear but it's a, an incredible novella i 100 recommend it i actually gave it five stars so yeah I, it was the second five star no oh my gosh no there's one more five star but yeah i really liked it i can't say much more about it because I will ruin it for you and I don't want to ruin the experience for you. And the last book I read in the month of September is, I always forget, Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour. Now I picked this up on a whim. Again, I was science fictioned out and I wanted some horror spooky reads and I thought that this was described as a modern day Victorian haunting story and I can tell you that this is precisely what that is. Now one thing that I really liked about this book is that it's very gentle and also that the ghosts are just accepted. Like we accept that ghosts exist and the players in the story, like the, the players, the characters see the ghost and they're like, oh yeah, ghost, careful, like there's a ghost. But the ghosts are not evil. So this is the story about a girl named Mila. Now Mila has been in the foster care system and she didn't get adopted by the couple that she was with. So she ends up aging out of the foster care system and she gets offered this job at a farm where there are these eccentric people that have adopted over 40 children in the past and that give children that age out of the foster system the opportunity to become kind of like teachers to their adopted children so they become kind of like homeschool teachers and stuff like that but they tell like like they're they're straight up like hey um, the farm is haunted and you're gonna see ghosts and you totally see ghosts and they do and it's a thing that is there But I like what they represent and I'm just gonna leave it at that. This is a beautiful read It's so beautiful indeed that this is the other book that I asked for for my birthday To have a physical copy of because I really want to add it to my shelves and I gave it five out of five stars and just chef's kiss to that you're still here and i'm still here and that is because we're gonna talk about the books that i dnf this month i actually started this month by trying to read the space between worlds by Micaiah johnson and this was pitched to me and to the world of book lovers as an adult science fiction with multiple realities now i'm not a big fan of multiple realities so that part is my fault but calling something adult when it's really ya is something that really grinds my gears when they told me the main character was 26 i was like wait 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 she's not 16 and honestly the book just read ya and i think this is an author that probably wrote a ya book but just aged up the characters and made them older i didn't enjoy i, I just I was uninterested. It was not my style. It read like a YA book. Again, you guys know that I have nothing and, and, and this is not to say that I feel that YA is somehow inferior. It's just that I don't enjoy the experience of reading YA. So don't freaking sell me a book as adult when it really is just YA. So I just DNF'd it because of that. It was also kind of boring. For a book that, that delves with time travel and stuff like that it just felt cliche to the extreme and i really did not enjoy it oh, hang on my leg is like falling asleep in this position i've been like sitting here for 40 minutes talking about books <laughs> don't you love it anyway and the last book that i not dnf but that i'm putting off to the side for now is mother Co mother's code by carol Stivers or Stevers, I'm sorry, I don't know if it's Stivers or Stevers. Um, this book has that thing again where it's like dual timelines. Basically, again, <laughs> guess what humans do? That's right, they kind of fuck up the world and uh, they decide that the only way to save humanity is basically to clone 
some humans and have robots raise them as their own but the robots get the personality of the person that cloned them so you get children with different kinds of personalities that part is great but then you get all the story of everything that happened leading up to that and i'm like all i want is my robots and children's story why do i have to read about all of the political shit that happened before and how the project got funded and how it got defunded and it was it just i don't care about that part so i decided to put the book down for now i might pick it up again but for now it's a dnf Woo! guys i'm tired <laughs> telling myself that I'm gonna like, let me get closer I keep telling myself that I'm going to like break this up somehow and do like five books and five books and then ten books I don't know like break it up but I, I honestly I really like talking about all the books that I read during the month in one go that, that that's the reality I'm sorry that you get a 40 minute video but that's what there is darling in this channel and well Without further ado, I think I've talked enough for today, so I bid you adieu with a friendly reminder that I post every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and that I appreciate each and every single one of you. And that maybe we'll bump into each other in another galaxy far, far away. Bye!